different way and apply to your neighbor in a different way. Number two, God says he's giving you protection from danger. Amen. Number three, God's lifting up to greater positions of authority. I don't know where you are going to be. Number four, God's shielding of his people from jealous enemies. When God is going to do these things, there will be a reason for you to know that God has spoken earlier. Number five, expansion of vision and your territories. Number six, financial openings to flourish and prosper. And number seven, that God will get you settled in the land. I may not know your faces as good as I wouldn't know your heart. But very important to say to you, if God spoke and gave the word, I do know one thing, he surely will do it. So whichever we apply to you, please take note of it. And that's why I decided to do that, that's why I don't forget. Amen. Now, in spite of all, we've read that long passage, Romans chapter 8. It's a passage that contains too many miseries. Say, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now, uh, you see, when I walk around, I don't look at people's faces. My children say, you are so bold. My children try to gang up against me in the house. Say, we'll scare daddy today, we'll scare him. Say, he's never scared. He's never scared. So they will gang up as they know I'm coming to the house. They will step by the road side, by the side of the doors. I come, ooh! I'll just stop. I'll just stop and smile. I look at them and walk away. Say, oh God. This man, don't, nothing can scare him. We walk into the dining room and they just jump. Hey! That's why they, before you came out in there. <laughs> and the same thing even in the life of man. Living amongst people. People look at me as, as if it's a different man. Why? Because I know I carry God. Look to your neighbor. If you do carry God, if you don't carry God, don't say it to me. But if you know you carry God, look to your neighbor and say, I carry God. I carry God. If you carry God, you don't fear. Like I told you before, when I sit in the plane, the last thing I'm thinking is the plane will crash. I didn't enter a car. I enter a plane. So I will go in the plane and I will get to where I'm going. One important thing you must understand is that God has ever been before you came. And if it has been for you even before you came, nothing will ever be against you. Amen. So I'll, I'll pick a few verses from there before I'll go into the other depth of what we are going to talk about. So turn to that opening text, Romans chapter 8. I'll read just a few verses and it will lead us into what part of the message today. Romans chapter 8, I will just pick a few verses and read. Verse number 18. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared to all at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. I'm reading from the New English Version. Let me look again. Today's English Version. No, there is yesterday English. <laughs> I'm reading today's English. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All, verse 19, all of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his sons. I am one of them. Are you one of them? Your neighbors will soon know who you are. Amen. Hey, hey, I say your neighbors will soon know who you are. Amen. Your co-workers, they will soon know who you are. Amen. That you are not there are times I, I, I move and I tell people I am not a human being. <laughs> when it allows me to operate as non-woman, I will operate as a non-woman. Right. Don't look at me like that. 
I am spirit, soul, and body. We operate with the body every time. So sometimes, how many of us operate in the spirit? When it's time to tell somebody I am a spirit, I'll say I am a spirit. Ah, sorry, sir. <laughs> People don't want to see spirits. People don't want to touch spirits. So when the physical cannot operate it, it cannot turn it, it cannot work upon it, my soul might try. And if the soul still fail, intellect fail, mindset fail, book, everything, I appear in the spirit. And nothing will the spirit come upon that will not bow. Jesus said, it is time that those who serve God will serve him. Amen. In spirit. So the more you serve God in this physical, the more struggle it might be. But when you decide to serve God in spirit, those things that have been struggling with your life, you will become an overcomer. Amen. You will conquer them. Amen. And they will give way as is as the flow of water. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. And in verse number 26, let me just skip that to so 28. We know that all things God works for good. Now, I mark that. In King James, when they say, and we know that all things work for good. But in this new, or today's English version is emphasizing that it is God that works it out. So you don't think it was how you did it, it worked for good. This one is saying, it is saying God, I repeat, let me read it again. It says, we know that all things, God, work for good. So God work them out for you. God work for good to those who love him, to whom he has called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. And finally, a big verse. 31 and 35. In view of all this, oh, I understand like that. In view, in view, when I can look at everything, I can retrospect, I can rewind the film, I can look at all that has happened, good or bad, the one that I like or I don't like. If I can look at everything all over, if I can remind myself, I can discuss everything, I can look all the diaries I wrote, all the negative things from January to December. In view of all this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then in verse 35 he says, who then can separate us from the love of God, of Christ? And he lifts up all these things that we pass through every day. And because of all these things that we pass through, I read them so that we end in verse 37, which is our team. It says, can trouble or hardship or persecution or hunger or poverty or death or danger or death as the scripture says, for your sake we were in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. And verse 39, 7 says, no. Tell your neighbor, no. No. Tell your neighbor, no. No. In all these things, so, whether it is hunger, that is making you to say, God, I'm not serving you again. Whether it's clothes, you don't have nice dress like your neighbor, or your shoe is not sopido, or whatever, like the other person. And you say, No, I'm not living right, I'm not, I'm not enjoying life, I'm not serving God again. You say, In all these things, persecution, you say, Oh, you are you going to service your God, you are not a member of our family again. Whatsoever you have served God so much, and your mates are laughing at you, you say, Look at you, you're almost 40 now. No husband. We told you last time. You get somebody. You said no, you're waiting for God. Where is the God now? Can he not give me a husband? Very soon now you begin to have some bags all over your face and nothing to show for your life. You are still here. No good job. They told you do this, do that.